Sometimes people will cancel at the last minute and I'll start making something and next thing you know, there's things exploding behind me, the alarm's going off. It doesn't matter. There's no mistakes in a vegan cooking uh, show or a vegan kitchen because nobody dies, right? <laughs> so everybody, please take your cell phones and hold them up in the air, okay? And now, take a picture of this so you'll know Facebook.com slash Jane Velez Mitchell to share all the videos we've been live streaming here at the conference. Now, I could go old school and give you business cards, but why not take a picture of it? And then you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And the reason I also want you to hold up your phone is that your phone is your best tool. You've got an entire network, a TV studio, satellites, everything, right in your back pocket or in your purse. Your cell phone is very powerful. Use it for animals. Are you ready to do that? Okay, what is my goal being here? It, I don't think every single one of you is suddenly gonna go out and become a social media influencer. But when I give these talks, usually there's a handful of people who get revved up. And sometimes we go, they say, let's go live right afterwards. And we're both going live at each other afterwards. There's this woman, Danny Rukin. I met her three years ago at the Animal Rights Conference. She had just become vegan. And I gave a similar talk. And afterwards, she said, show me how to go live. And she went live and I went live. Now she's one of our biggest contributors. She's traveling the world, uh, spreading the word about veganism. And I am so, so thrilled that somehow I tapped into something with her that she unleashed. She is just an incredible, incredible voice for animals. And she's using that phone all over from where she's based in Portland, Oregon to traveling all over the country. And now I think she's in The Hague. I don't know where she is. Every time I go on Facebook, she's somewhere else doing a speak out, uh, covering a vegan meal, going to a vegan restaurant, going to a vigil, going to a cube of truth. She is really using it to the max. So I'm hoping that some people in this room will do the same. Because let me tell you something, the animals cannot afford us to be shy. In the words of Freely the Banana Girl, who is from Australia, get over yourself. I don't care if you've got a pimple. The animals are dying. Get on social media. That's what she said, and she's right. So... Again, it's also a lot of fun. There I am at a veg fest, making a fool of myself, but going live, having a good time. Um, you know, here's the thing. We have to use social media if we want to save this planet from environmental catastrophe as the result of animal agriculture, if we want to save animals. We all know they're killing 50, 60, 70 billion a year. A lot of you just watched Dominion. It's gut-wrenching. There are 7.6 billion human beings on this planet. There are too many people to talk to them individually. It's simple math. So we have to use social media because mainstream media is ignoring us. How do I know that? I was a TV reporter and a, a TV anchor and a TV host for 38 years. I was behind the curtain, and I did manage by hook or by crook to do animal stories. But boy, uh, it was by hook or by crook. Okay, the mainstream media is not covering us, so we need to become the media. And why is the mainstream media not covering us? Look at the advertisers. Meat, dairy, pharmaceuticals. And, you know, they're not just farming animals, they're farming us too. There's a reason they call it the Food and Drug Administration. First, they feed you the crappy food, and then they sell you all those drugs. Multi-billion dollar industry. And every time you turn on the TV, especially in the United States, what do you see? Either it's a fast food commercial or somebody like, I mean, honestly, I can't even have dinner while I watch like the news to catch up on the latest political madness because it seems like everybody in America either has uh, constipation or erectile dysfunction or some horrible thing, right? Um, none of which they would have if they just switched to a plant-based diet. So, <laughs> exactly. 
So what we really need to take the media into our hands, and we can do it. So uh, that's why I started the Jane Unchained News Network. Uh, basically, when I wrapped up my show, at, and this was several years ago, uh, precisely at 59 and a half, by the way, um, my girlfriend and I uh, started going to protests uh, because I was free. I was unchained, in a sense. I could do whatever I want because, no, it, first of all, I'm always grateful to the people I used to work for to allow me to do my animal segments. I did everything. I, I did pig gestation crates and, uh, you know, tail docking and all sorts of things. I had all these animal rights activists on the show. But when the show wrapped up, I was able to go to protests as a participant, which, you know, if you're a reporter uh, in a major organization, you can't be going to protests as a protester, right? You're supposed to remain objective. So I started going to all these protests, and the first thing I noticed was, wait a second, it's in New York City, people are going to tremendous lengths to put together these elaborate protests. Sometimes they're almost naked, freezing, sh shivering in the cold, but it's cold. People are walking by. They're trying to get home to, to their warmth. They're not really looking at it. Nobody's documenting it. And I'm like, wait a second. You know, what is this all for if nobody is stopping and nobody's documenting it? So I just realized at that moment, that's my niche. I can use the techniques that I've learned over 38 years in journalism, do reports on these animal rights protests and events that nobody seems to be covering because the media isn't covering. And by the way, what they would say to me, I said, where's the media? And they said, oh, well, there was a breaking news story. Well, there's always a breaking news story. And I know from being a reporter, that's what you say. If you don't want to cover, oh, I, sorry, I can't make it. It's a breaking news story. So um, I started doing these reports. I'll tell you the first story I did nine degrees in Brooklyn, we were all freezing. There were 200 animal activists or more outside Staples Center, Ringling Brothers protest. No media, the people going in were not paying attention. And I even thought to myself, what am I doing this for? Is this, is this really a good idea? Well, guess what? Ringling Brothers is now out of business, okay? So I'm not saying I'm responsible for that. The work of many organizations like PETA uh, is responsible for that. But if I leave you with one thing, don't get overwhelmed by the challenge. Just do the next indicated thing and stay out of the results. Every day, the next indicated thing, the next indicated thing, the next indicated thing, and stay out of the results, because we're having results. So we've done hundreds of videos, absolutely hundreds of videos, um, ever since I started, basically in 2015, and um, we had a breakthrough when Facebook Live started because I was always a live reporter. As a local news reporter, as an anchor, as a TV host, I was always live. So I, I, the idea of shooting things and editing till four in the morning was really getting to me. All of a sudden, Facebook Live, I was like, Hallelujah. Now we can just go live like we're going live right now. Thanks to Cheyenne, one of our contributors at Jane Unchained. We're going live right now and we don't have to spend five hours editing it. So I just immediately said, wow. So now we go live all the time and all over the world. And uh, we just started this again in 2015, but we're growing fast. And it's not like, oh, you have to do this. You can start. I want somebody to do Jane Unchained better than Jane Unchained. I mean, am I, you know what? I really want to be on the beach reading a trashy novel. I'm doing this because the animals are dying, and I'm not going to be able to enjoy my life until we win this battle to stop the unnecessary, indiscriminate slaughter of billions of animals. That's why I'm doing it. And I would love somebody else to do it in a better, more sophisticated fashion. I, I'm, I'm for the competition. We, we, we shouldn't have that idea in animal rights that, oh, this is my story or this is my project. We've got to all get together and just be unified as one to um, let our egos go so that we can triumph over the forces that are really sociopathic because what they're doing to animals is evil. It is evil. We need to call it by its name. Torturing animals unnecessarily is evil. For years, I covered murders. And you know what? What's the definition of homicide? The unjustifiable killing of another. That's murder. So what's happening is mass murder. And that's just the fact. 
That's what it is. And thanks to Dr. Melanie Joy, who is here, and um, she's going to be speaking tomorrow. I used to be a little more apologetic, and after I heard her, I said, no, I'm not going to apologize for speaking the truth and for being right. We've got to call it what it is. Um, and, and people say, well, you're being judgmental. I said, well, what about criminal justice system? When somebody commits a crime and you arrest them and you try them, is that being judgmental? No, it, it's called justice. So here's one of my favorite, favorite activists, Earthling Ed. We covered him live uh, just earlier this month. The change that is coming, it is palpable. It exists in the hearts and minds of each and every one of us. Feel it. Believe it. The change is coming. The sun will one day set on this world and a new dawn will rise. Out of the ashes of violence, hope will rise. Now we as a movement exist in the millions of individuals, but together we move as one. And as one, we cannot be stopped. Now, I want to point out, by the way, that video got 64,000 views. And um, did you shoot that? Cheyenne, give her a round of applause. <laughs> Cheyenne shot that. Now, you might see all these cameras, but that's not mainstream media. That's plant-based news over there, Klaus Mitchell, and that's that vegan couple on the right. And those are all animal activists shooting it. Those are not mainstream media. Where was the mainstream media? They should be all over that speech. At the very same time, in Miami, at the official Animal Rights March, Miami 2018, this is Shannon Blair reporting live for JaneUnchained.com. Hundreds of activists have come out in support of the animals today. Again, you wouldn't see that on mainstream media. They're not doing the kind of coverage that they should be doing of these marches. And on the very same day, perhaps in a different time zone. Jane Unchained, live in Los Angeles at the official Animal Rights March. We have thousands of people marching behind us, not just here in Los Angeles, but all over the world. There are marches in London. There are also marches in Washington, D.C. And there are marches in Luxembourg and Sweden. So check Woo! this out. This is a global movement. People rising up saying, you need to stop killing animals. It's not necessary. It's horrific for the environment. It's horrific for human health. It's also horrific for the animals themselves. For all these reasons, we need to embrace compassion. This is the growing and exploding social justice movement of our times. Now, um, that week we got 649,000 views. And um, that was just one week in August where a lot of fun things were happening. But the reason this is important is that the local news media in all of those places gave very paltry coverage. There was, no lo there was one camera from a local station in Los Angeles. But sometimes, you know, they've even gone to the vigils and not aired. There was one reporter who went to a vigil in Los Angeles, did a story, and didn't air it. So let's stop begging mainstream media for coverage and let's own the media ourselves. Let's take the media into our own hands. I can tell you that being in television for many years, everybody thinks billions of people are watching you and that's not true. Um, sometimes it's like 30,000, okay, or 40,000 people, even on a national show or 50,000. But see the numbers here? We can get to better numbers. So as they say, never underestimate the ability of a small but determined group of individuals to change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. This is our core group in Los Angeles. Those are our contributors and people who were involved. Uh, we've got bookers. We've got uh, somebody who does Instagram uh, and just a great group of people. But we've also been growing and uh, we have now 60 contributors. In fact, I picked up a couple uh, right here at the conference. And one of the reasons that I was so excited to come to Europe is that I really want to encourage the European coverage. And so we have uh, Inga, and we have, there's Inga, she's gonna be a contributor. And uh, thank you, Inga. And uh, you know, she came up to me. I kind of wait for people to come up to me because I found as a general rule when I try to convince somebody to do it, eh. 
But if somebody comes up to me and they're excited, they're more likely to follow through. Because it is work. I mean, it's fun, it's creative, but there's work involved. So if you'd like to become a contributor, uh, we'd love to have you. And uh, the thing is, you might think, well, does she also play violin? Uh, or is she packing heat? No. I have a stabilizer that is just $99 on Amazon, and it provides steady video at the protests. Now, when you're doing something like this, which is a speech where you're not moving, you can use a, a monopod and just a little uh, gizmo to hold your cell phone. But when you're moving around, you can be very shaky, and it's best to get the stabilizer. And we've bought them for a lot of people. Um, it's it's part of what we do to get people to use them, but sometimes they don't use them right, or it's tricky, but literally it's not that difficult, and it really makes it a lot more cinematic and look professional. So, despite that, a very good friend of mine, Nora Marino, who's a great attorney in New York who fights against uh, the chicken slaughter, the ritualized chicken slaughter, she was, she got, she just called me, she says, I'm in North Carolina. She's another loud New Yorker like myself. She said, I'm in North Carolina and I'm gonna go live. I said, great, go, go for it. Live for Jane Unchained in Tar Heel, North Carolina, protesting animal slaughterhouses, particularly this one in Smithfield Slaughterhouse in Tar Heel. Here comes a truck right now with trapped pigs, tons of them, be trucked to their death. was even though she was shaky, you know, uh, but she had, first of all, she's capturing things raw. And that's one of the things I like about live is that you get that rawness, like the cop going, back up! You know, you, you will miss that sometimes when you're shooting things on tape and you capture things raw. Uh, part of the, you know, the trick is to capture those moments. And um, you really get a sense of cinema verite, very raw and unedited. But what I also loved about what she did, even though it was shaky, was that she was expressing her feelings. This is gut-wrenching. And what I try to tell people when they go live is, instead of trying to sound like a scientist and spouting a lot of statistics that can be wrong and inaccurate and that can sometimes get you in legal trouble if you're talking about a private company, just speak from the heart. You know, nobody can sue you for saying, I'm heartbroken by what I'm seeing here today. Or it's gut-wrenching, and it's more effective anyway. Just speak from the heart. This is ultimately a consumer issue. It's not about attacking, you know, any company. It's happening all over the world. And I do like, you know, the whole philosophy of the SAVE movement, which I think is brilliant, um, of, of being love-based. But in, in the way we translate it is, Keep it on the consumer. None of this would be happening if people weren't ordering meat and dairy and buying meat and dairy. So what's the goal? The goal is for me, somebody who's sitting there eating a hamburger or a milkshake or, or a chicken, stops, drops their fork and goes, what am I doing? I mean, that's the goal, is to wake people up. So here's another one. We talked about Danny Rukin. Here's something she did, and she was operating like a breaking news reporter, uh, going to the scene of a breaking news story. Ma'am, you probably want to go up there on the hill. They're not allowing people down Oh, they're there. not? Okay. Can you tell me anything that's happening? No, I, you know, there's state patrols right up there. Okay. They'll be able to help So got to go up there. Okay, so, but these are chickens here. Wow. Oh, this is just so... All right, uh, they're telling me I need to go somewhere else, but this is clearly where I need to be. <laughs> this is horrific. Oh my God, oh my God, this is horrific. 
this is horrific. Oh, God, help us. Oh, my God. This one looks dead. All right, he's gonna, um, oh, my God. Look at these poor babies. And look at the condition they're in. And these are the ones who are just, this is their condition normally. This is what they're dealing with. Look at that. So what I loved about that was that, again, she didn't say anything that was potentially legally troublesome, but just her emotion carried through. And that got a lot of videos. And I think it just shows people the truth of what's happening. You know, when I was walking here, uh, to come to this conference every day. I kind of counted the number of images encouraging people to eat meat or dairy that I passed. I passed about 30 of them, okay? Walking from my little hotel um, in the plaza and passing not only signs, but actual meat uh, proprietors plus um, billboards plus, and this is in a tiny little town. We are up against Thousands of images that are subliminally telling people to eat animals every day. So we all have to step it up on social media. Now, one of the things that people will say is, well, you know, people aren't going to watch that whole video. Well, guess what? They spend millions of dollars making TV commercials that, what do we do? We ignore them. We mute them. We walk out of the room. We just look the other way. Well, why are they spending millions of dollars making them then? because it gets into the reptilian brain. So if somebody's looking at a news feed and they see your vegan post, whether it's a meal or a protest, they don't have to watch the whole thing. You know, the subconscious is very smart and it's going to start um, doing the math that, wow, this is something that's happening. What I'm doing isn't so cool anymore. It's not quite as acceptable to go out and eat meat. I mean, that's our goal is, is to make it unacceptable to go out and unnecessarily maim and kill an animal. Uh, and that has been normalized, but we can unnormalize it. Continuing our live coverage of the enormous animal rights protest going on here in San Francisco, California. More than a thousand demonstrators marching on mass to demand an end of animal exploitation for food, for leather, for fur, but especially for food. 50 to 60 billion animals killed every year unnecessarily. None of these people eat them and they're all doing just fine and have tremendous energy. Now, so I just wanted to point out that there's so much visual material in our movement. Again, the mainstream media generally doesn't cover the marches that happen in San Francisco. You know when they come out? They come out when 30 people are arrested at a, a, a poultry shop. And then the local news media does distorted coverage where they never even talk about animal welfare during the whole report. Okay, so um, it's up to us to take control of media. Um, it it kind of reminds me of if you're in a repressive regime and you need to hand out leaflets to people secretly to get the truth out. But we've got a very powerful tool. Let's not underestimate it. I'm going to stay clear of politics, but I will say that it was quoted that the it, last election was won as a result of Facebook. Okay, that was a quote from somebody who ran, uh, was involved with Cambridge Analytica. So um, th these tools can be used for any number of reasons, and they can be used as a force for good. Now, the SAVE movement is another. I urge you to go to vigils, and I urge you to go live. I'm sure many of you already go to vigils. Many of you organize vigils and probably do a lot more on that front than I do. But uh, when you're there, go live. Go live. Hi, babies. I'm so sorry, I love you. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I've so I was there in Toronto, and then we have Fede, who's a great Hey there, this is Fede again from Buenos Aires Animal Safe. I'm here in front of a truck full of these beautiful beans. They're about to, to get inside the slaughterhouse. And I feel very sad about this. This is so unnecessary, these beautiful beans. So 
Now, one of the things I say when you go live, try to, the, the truth is it doesn't even matter if you're an award-winning documentarian. Most people will tune out after three seconds. So, you know, your vast m number of people are going to tune after three seconds, then 10 seconds. The point is to grab them right off the top. And Fede did an amazing job getting up close, because in Latin America, you can get very, very close to some of these animals, whereas in the United States or perhaps in Europe, they keep you more at a distance, and the trucks are mo more open air. Um, but I would start with the animals because even if somebody watches for three seconds, that has gone into their brain. Uh, the, the subconscious, again, is so much smarter than the conscious mind. The, the subconscious will do the math when they see that and they'll, they'll say, oh, uh, oh my God. Oh, oh yeah. I didn't want to see that, but now I have and I can't forget it. So um, one of the things that we try to do, like we're live here and we've gone live with uh, all the incredible speeches. I've learned so much, uh, but we've been here in the corner going live and we're going live right now, is that going live can bring uh, panels that might not be seen by thousands of people to a broader audience. This was an incredible okay. conference yes. in um, North Carolina in Asheville, Such which believe it or not has a great animal rights movement. In different ways and, for um, different people. Uh, th there were some brilliant speeches, really brilliant speeches, but they were watched by a relative handful of people, most of whom were vegan. So um, to go live at something like this or share our live videos, it really expands it to other people. And I'm sorry, there's no so way gonna, you're going to be able to listen to Earthling Ed, Dr. Celeste Rao, Renee King morning. Sonnen of Rowdy Girl Sanctuary, and Paul Barry of um, Brother gonna, Wolf without waking up a little bit. A you know, sometimes you just come out of your slumber. Uh, the, the people we're trying to reach, okay. um, they're very invested in plausible deniability. I didn't know. I don't want to know. But if you tell them, despite them not wanting to know, you open that crack in the door. And we can also cover fun things. It doesn't have to be all sadness. Hey. Oh, fresh up, fresh up. Back before another roll, double gave my girl a kiss. Told her that I love her, motivated me when I was sick. Pockets in his rubber. It's right there, I can give a different option. Never saw it. Take a shot and not in Perry. Chase it up, I'm going to the sunset. Grown brothers, I can put the sun and do it up. Buy everything she ever wanted. Now I'm back and forth and kind of trying to. That's Gray. He is one of my heroes. He wrote the Thanksgiving song, which is a brilliant music video. And he is a great force just bringing young people, people who are into hip hop music and rap into this movement. And so we want to capture people who are doing art and music and uh, who are doing fun stuff. Now, one of the things we do is a daily vegan cooking show on lunch break called Lunch Break Live. And we started it, basically, my mom lived to 99 and a half, uh, pretty much vegan. And uh, we give her 100. But after she passed away, her very good friend from Argentina came to visit. And she would come for a week. And you know, Donna and I were running around just eating at our computers. And she said, absolutely not. We are going to have a formal lunch. This is the way it must be done. And so every day, we found ourselves making a lunch and sitting down at the table eating it. We're like, oh, god. But then suddenly I, I connected it to this live video and I was like, well, if we're gonna have to have lunch anyway, let's go live. So I have to thank Nilda Tapia, um, who, by the way, her nephew is friends with the Pope. She's from Argentina and she will not let you forget that. Um, but anyway, I wanna thank Nilda for giving us the idea by forcing us to make a very formal lunch every day. So we started Lunch Break Live and it really took off. And now we've got a lot of um, just incredible chefs and, and celebrities who do this daily vegan cooking show. We are live on Lunch Break Live with the extraordinary Gianna Simone of Star Trek Into Darkness, a vegan star joining us on Lunch Break Live today. We're so delighted to have you. Take it away. Okay, so first we're making um, one of my favorite recipes, which are oatmeal cookies, and there's only two ingredients. So first we start That's with That's why really she's so thin, bananas. there's only two ingredients. And, um, so what you gotta do is the bananas. Mm -hmm. I actually toss these into my garden, so I'm gonna set these aside. So we do this oh, every nice single thin, day. Um, we've done, right we've never missed a day. We've done hundreds of them, and uh, they're a lot of fun, and you can do them. 
Anytime you're cooking at home, you could do that yourself, and I urge everybody to do it. Um, the other thing that I think is great is that you can also go live for groundbreaking talks. This was a talk that changed my life. Dr. Selesh Rao, he's one of the founders of the internet. He's a genius. He has started something called Vegan World 2026. He believes we can create, just like the internet just basically took over our lives in 10 years, he thinks we can make a vegan world. So that's how much things changed in 10 years. And after that, we cannot even imagine going back to an era without the internet. Now this, when he spoke, he spoke literally to 20 people. So uh, the technology allowed us to go live and then boost it and target people like environmentalists, in quotes, National Resources Defense Council, all these people who should be vegan and who are not. And when they hear somebody with his credentials, a Stanford PhD, who was instrumental in the development of the internet, uh, they listen. So last year, we got 16 and a half million video views, which I think is pretty good considering we just started this in 2015. And we are hoping to get more, um, even though Facebook has not, you know, is not sending out quite as much as it used to. So we have to use tricks of the trade. Now, there's been a lot of discussion about trolls. I personally embrace trolls because when we're at a vigil and somebody says, mmm, bacon, and they're looking at poor pigs going to slaughter, or they send bacon emojis, people will respond and they'll say, you know, have some compassion and blah, 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 and it starts a dialogue. And often those videos take off because um, Facebook regards that as engagement, and it is engagement. Uh, so I say embrace the trolls, and I always just encourage them to keep, you know, talking because it creates that uh, friction and that conversation that that makes the video even more compelling. So this one, I want to say, even if you don't have a group, even if you can just with a camera and a friend following you, you can do something life changing. Do not support the Miami, the Miami Aquarium. The leader, the orca here, has been kept in confinement for over 48 years. She's performed over 48,000 times. Now, this is a woman just going by herself to the, the uh, abusement park and just going live. And Danny Rukin and others have just gone into supermarkets, followed by somebody, or standing on a street corner and gone live. And you know what? You, it's like this, the modern day soapbox. Don't feel limited. I mean, your imagination, just let your imagination run wild and obviously obey the laws and don't do anything that's gonna get you sued or in legal trouble. But you can use this phone in so many creative words, uh, ways. Here's the live stream of the vegan cooking. It's just a snapshot. But literally, um, you, could, you could even do it yourself. Uh, but it'd be good if you had somebody else cooking while you went live. I mean, quite often, um, Donna will shoot me, and then I'll bring her into taste test. And so if you have a partner, uh, a spouse, somebody you work with, you can do this. Every time you make a meal, you need to document it unless it's like really ugly. But, you know, if it's, if it's a nice meal, you document it, you dress it up a little bit. I'm a horrible cook, and I do lunch break lives all the time. Sometimes people will cancel at the last minute, and I'll start making something, and next thing you know, there's things exploding behind me, the alarm's going off. It doesn't matter. There's no mistakes in a vegan cooking uh, show or a vegan kitchen because nobody dies, right? There's no mistakes. <laughs> so... Okay, so bottom line, our mission is to saturate social media with vegan animal rights content, normalize veganism to make veganism the norm. That's our mission. Are you on board to do something with your phones to make that happen? Let's do it. If not us, who? So a network, you know, people are very intimidated by the media. Oh, the media, oh, a network. Well, a network is really a fancy word for a video product like a video, like a live video or a tape video, with a channel to an audience. Everybody with a Facebook account, an Instagram account, and a YouTube account has a potential network at their fingertips. All they need to do is grow it. And people do it all the time. Take a look at this couple.
I'm Natasha. And I'm Luca, and together we're that vegan couple on YouTube and other social media. We are from Australia, but tonight we are here in San Francisco, US of A. Uh, we are taking part in a Cube of Truth. In fact, it's the world's largest ever Cube of yes. Truth. Yes, we're making history tonight. And the whole point of a Cube of Truth is to show the public what the industry does not show us, and that is the truth. Be so they're fantastic. I love that vegan couple. There's also another couple in LA called Those Annoying Vegans, and they're adorable, uh, boyfriend and girlfriend, and they do incredible videos. And then there's my girlfriend, that snarky vegan girl. And um, it's the reason I bring her up is that she branded herself. At uh, first, she was sober vegan lesbian. Did not work, was it? She's like, I don't know what's wrong. I'm not getting response. I was like, sober vegan lesbian, maybe, maybe it's a little too narrow. Um, so one day she was being kind of, kind of bitchy in the kitchen, you know, and she was like, I don't have time for that. I said, you know, you're that snarky vegan girl. And she said, yeah, I am that snarky vegan girl. So we all of a sudden said, that's your brand. And you know what? Now she's got like 50-some thousand followers, and people really respond. In fact, people say to me, where's Snarky? People come up to me all over the world. They go, where's Snarky? Um, so the reason I mention it is brand yourself. Give yourself a fun name. Uh, like I, I did Jane Unchained. Um, actually, it was my girlfriend who uh, basically came up with it. We were walking down the street, and she's like, you're Unchained. And I said, yeah, Jane Unchained. I was like, oh, that's fun. And so. If you give yourself a catchy name, people will remember you and you can become a brand. And that's one way to get your videos out there. And we all know these brands like Freely the Banana Girl. I mentioned her earlier, um, that, those annoying vegans. I mean, think of a fun brand. You know, brainstorm with your friends. And when it clicks, um, you'll know it. I think there was one woman who was doing yoga. She was a vegan. She's like, I can't think of a name. And I... I what was it? I said, uh, uh, I don't know, I said Ahimsa, Ahimsa Vegan, or uh, we came up with a really funny name. I can't remember it now. But we brainstormed, and all of a sudden, boom, when you know it. When, when it's a good name, you'll know it. And then you can brand all your social media, and um, uh, y y you have actually a brand. Because unfortunately, we live in a world where Everything's got to be a brand, so we might as well embrace it. So, by the way, we became a nonprofit, a 501c3, and um, so it went from being a money pit to a nonprofit. That's kind of fun. And um, I just want to leave you with this. You know, I was driving around and um, I was listening to PBS, and Joan Baez was talking about how the anti war movement did not really take off until music entered the picture. And so, when we had Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and all these, Dylan, and everybody writing music about anti-war. Suddenly, the people who don't sit around reading the New York Times or the Washington Post, they, they picked up on the anti-war movement, and it became a cultural phenomenon that swept across the country. We want to do the same thing with animal rights. So I urge all of you to start writing animal rights music or collaborating in some way. I am not a musician, although I was forced to take piano as a child, and I was not very good at it. But it came in handy when I wrote this song with uh, my friend Jason Carroll. So check out, this is Jane Unchained's first music video, but we'll have more. Tear down your wall of resistance Certainly not all my insistence That she can feel Her pain is real When will I see a burst of compassion That equals your love of music and fashion What will it take for you to break?
see yourself as a beacon of virtue What if some stranger decided to hurt you Like you hurt him Would it be a sin? What will it take to crush your denial? When will you see he's just a child? It's not his fate to fill your plate be kind already, let go of your pride already, listen to the cries already, and open your heart. Enough already, I'm losing my mind already, processing's a grind already, I know that you're You think I'm just out to make trouble As you fight like hell to stay in your bubble But you will see that history's on my side Be kind already Let go of your pride already Listen to the cries already And open your I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, I hope that you all go out there and get those phones going live. Thanks so much for watching my speech here at the International Animal Rights Conference in Luxembourg. I hope that it inspires you to speak up for voiceless animals and go live whenever you can on Facebook, on Instagram, Every vegan meal, every cube of truth, every time you're at a vigil, share it with the world. So please like, share, comment, and subscribe to Vegan Canal. It's got life-changing information for you and free vegans you may know.